This is David Luking with Grass Flap. Wanted to uh, show you guys we're going to do an installation today on a Skag V Ride 2 with a 32 inch deck. Um, so we'll go through the process of installing it and show you what it looks like when it's finished. We're going to uh, remove the factory discharge chute. We'll just take this off, set it aside along with the uh, bolts and nuts. We, we don't need those. First thing we're going to do is install the no drill mount. It fits to the existing factory tabs. We're going to slip it in place here. Uh, notice it's got this bolt on it, which is, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it later, but it's for controlling the how far open the flap comes. So the first thing we want to do then is use a couple of these uh, 5 sixteenths by 1 inch bolts and uh, along with the nuts that are provided in the kit. So when we go to tighten this, uh, you want to go ahead and tighten the, the front one first, get it snugged up. So we have that in place, good and tight. Now we need to go ahead and install the uh, flap itself. Before we do that, we need to remove this bolt. Takes a uh, half inch wrench, break it loose. We're going to pull that bolt out and we're going to put it right back in, but we're going to get the spring mount up in the correct position. So, spring mount needs to rotate up. Usually, you've got to break this bolt loose a little bit. Don't crank it very far, and then we've got to tighten that one back up and we're done. Okay, so we're going to rotate this up into position. We're going to go ahead and put our bolt back in. Now we're going to go ahead and snug this bolt just a, just a little bit, not terribly tight, you know, so that we can still adjust it if we need to. All right, so this is going to fit right here. We're going to use a couple 3 8 bolts on this. So get my tools. I'm going to use an impact uh, driver just because it's a little quicker. So what we want to do is take our Put this underneath and get our nut started. We'll do the same for this one. We're going to go ahead and tighten these bolts up. And what I've found the easiest way to do this is to go ahead and get a wrench on the back one. Before we get it all the way snug down tight, we're going to come in and just Push it flat with your knee. Drive that one down tight. Now you can open. Enough to get your wrench on. Flap is installed now. Um, the next thing that we want to do is we're going to go ahead and point our spring mount down. We'll get it as low as it'll point. We'll go ahead and tighten that up. Remove the cover. While we're at it, we want to go ahead and lower the deck. Move the cover off the back. Just gonna set these down here so I don't lose them. Set this cover around to the, on the side. 
So the next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and, and feed the cable through. And this this is probably the hardest part of the whole uh, the whole thing. So the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and pull this rubber boot off. You want to take both jam nuts and spin them completely off so that they're on the cable only so we can feed it through. So the, the challenge is we need to feed this cable through. It's hard to see. There is a little notch right in here. So we're going to so we're going to feed that cable through and come over the top of these two uh, lines here and then we'll and then we'll run up here onto the deck and I'll show you where that goes. That, but that's the hardest part is getting that cable through there. Okay, so the best way to do this is to get all of this through the slot first and then we'll come back with the fitting through. So you got to fish it through this little once all that hardware is through, you can reach around on, with your hand onto the back side and, and flip that fitting up. Once you get that fitting up, then, then you should be able to guide this right on through. Okay, the next thing we want to do is go ahead and install the uh, cable onto the pedal. And to do that, we'll get the uh, cable hardware. It'll either be in a yellow bag like this or perhaps a clear bag, depending on, uh, depending on the particular version. What we're looking for is this U-shaped clevis, the removable clevis. We're going to need a cotter pin, and we're going to need the uh, quarter-inch pin to go hook all that together. We're going to put the rest of it back in the bag so we don't lose it. It's very easy to lose some of those small parts and pieces. So uh, keep them in the bag if you're not ready to use them. First thing we want to do is we want to take this spring and unhook it. There's a little notch right there where that spring belongs. Okay. And so we're going to remove it off of there so that we can open the pedal all the way up. Alright. Take the U-shaped clevis and we're going to Hook it to the ball here. We want to make sure that when we connect it, that the the clevis and the cable are in line. Um, occasionally, there'll be a little bit of stuff on the ball, and and maybe we'll want to hang crooked. We want to make sure you get it so it's lined up straight. Once we do that, we're then going to take the quarter inch pin. Insert it. Go and put the cotter pin in. Go ahead and open it out. You want to bend this all the way back over on itself so it's as small as it can be. Okay, once that's done, the next step then is going to be to close the pedal so that the clevis is in line the direction that it wants to pull. If you don't do it in this order, then this, it makes this hard to get closed, plus it also uh, bends the cable in that. So you want to go this, this route. You want to take and remove the rubber boot, spin the first nut all the way off, and so then we're going we're gonna to close it. When we do, we want to put that first nut and slip it into the slot here. So, so once we have that slipped in, we're going to go ahead and finish spinning the nut all the way on. On the pedal end, what you want to do is have this second nut within about four or five threads of being all the way threaded on and then we want to bring this first one on up to where they're, they're tight and then we're going to go ahead and snug these. This may be the right spot or, or it may have to be adjusted but let's go ahead and start with it snugged up. When you tighten these you don't want to you don't want to crush it you want to just snug it up and let it sit there, okay? So what does this look like? So you can see we've got the clevis pointed in the right direction. We've got our rubber boot over here. We want to go ahead and get seated back on. So it's in position. And the last thing we've got to do is reconnect this spring. Okay, so that's everything all connected together. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and position our pedal up here, we're going we're gonna to mount it in these two holes down here, these two holes, using the uh, bolts that are supplied. Before we do that, we're going to go ahead and get this cable routed behind this spring. So the spring is easy enough to lift off. 
reattach it so it's in the right spot. I found it's easier to start with this back bolt and you can get you in here with your finger. Hold it in position and go ahead and get this first one started. And we're going to use a, it's a 5 16 carriage bolt. We're going to use a nut and a, a washer up underneath here. Then we're going to get our second set nut and bolts. We can get a little space right here. Drop this in. Now we're going to use a uh, half inch socket to bring these tight. And when we do this, what we want to make sure of is that we point the pedal as far as we can toward this edge so that it gets the cable as close to this side as we can get it. So we've got that tight. So we want to fix this cable so that it's not hanging out past the back end, but also I can't draw it down too tight because then my, uh, my bend radius gets too small. So, so this looks like a good spot right here. So we've got that in place. We're gonna go ahead and put the cover back on while we've got the opportunity here. Okay, next thing we have to do is get our cable routed up here around the uh, belts and pulleys. And uh, this is always a concern for people that something's going to happen here. This works out very well. We're able to route this underneath the tensioner, underneath the spring, and just let it lay here on the deck. And we'll point it over here. Okay, the next step is we want to go ahead and connect the cable to the spring mount. And the first thing we got to do is put this jam nut back on that we removed earlier. And we're going to run this on to where it's about maybe five or six threads from the from being all the way on. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, and slip the cable down and through here. We're just going to snug these up. We're not going to tighten them just yet because we've got a check we've got to do on the pedal height before we do that. Okay. So we want to put the rubber boot back on. Okay, with the uh, cable connected to the spring mount, next thing we're going to need is our some more of our cable hardware. This these cable clamps we don't need, so we're going to put them back in the bag. We're just going to use this cotter pin, this 3 16 pin, and this bushing. First thing we have to do is put our 3 16 bushing in this slot or in this hole. Then we're going to connect our cable our clevis and we're going to put this pin in. This pin is going to go in with the head on the back side. Go ahead and install our cotter pin. And again, when we bend this over, we want to bend it all the way back on itself. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and connect the spring mount to this spring mount bolt or the uh, spring bolt. And I found the easiest way to do it on this particular grass flap with this design to it is to go ahead and open it up. In this case, we'll have to hold it open and we're going to reach in here with a pair of channel locks and grab the open end. You can see this is the open end of the spring. You can grab it, squeeze tight, and pull it out and hook it over just like this. Okay, with the spring mount on, there's a couple of things I want to point out. One is that this bushing and this stack up assembly here, this head of the bolt, head of the bushing, and then this 
piece of steel all want to be as far this direction toward the rear of the moor as you can get them. If you come over to this rear bushing, you need to make sure that this isn't keeping this one from the front one from sliding all the way over. So this looks good right here. And the reason for that is because up here on the spring mount itself, when this on the uh, spring mount, you can see when this opens right here, you see the spring just barely rubbing that bolt, that's, that's okay. That intent there is to keep everything shifted toward the back so it doesn't get this way. When it gets this way, it creates problems for the pin and the clevis passing back here. So it's important that everything slide toward the back of the mower and it allows this to open and close smoothly. So one thing we wanna make sure we've got set properly is this uh, open closed or open position limiting bolt. What happens is this part of the hinge plate contacts here and it keeps it from making contact up here on the side of the mower. We're in the down position. If we raise this up, you'll see it's just right on the very edge. So what we want to do is make a little adjustment to make that bolt higher and then it won't hit the contact up there. So this open uh, position limiting bolt has got a jam nut on the bottom and a jam nut on the top. The one on the bottom is right against this rib, so you really can't make any adjustments to it. Um, you can loosen this one and you can turn the bolt on top. So in our particular case, with the uh, deck in the up position, we are very close to making contact here. What we uh, probably ought to do is give ourselves a little bit of extra space. So 9 16 wrench. We're going to crank this up just enough that we start getting a little space here. Now as you, as you raise that, you're going to need to hold that jam nut. So you can see now we've got just a little bit of space here, which is what you want to have. Okay, so remember um, when we installed the cable, we did not tighten up the jam nuts. Uh, we didn't do that on purpose. That's the last step we need to make sure of. And what we want to do is we want to make sure the pedal height is correct. So what we're going to do is open the flap to this balance position. You'll, you'll see there's a little spot in here where it'll stand on its own. Then we're going to go back and look at the pedal. Okay, okay so what we want to do is check the pedal height. And what we're looking for is the clearance between the top of this tab and the bottom of the pedal itself. And what we'd like when we put full pressure on it is for it to bottom out, which is usually with about a quarter to three eighths of an inch clearance. We've got about five eighths of an inch of clearance. So what we need to do is make an adjustment here to these jam nuts that will change the position of this pedal. So the first thing we got to do is crack this, these two nuts, jam nuts loose again. And what I'm going to do is, 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 is you watch, I'm going to go ahead and keep tension on here. I'm going to spin this nut back. And now as I let this nut go forward, see the pedal height go down. So that's what we're looking to do is to spin this nut on farther so that we have about the right clearance on this. On this. So I'm going to go ahead and run the front nut on back tight. I'm going to snug this back down. These do not have to be super tight. Okay, so those are back in position. I've got about a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch. So again, with the flap in that balanced position, what I want to check is, can I get that pedal, and I can, pushing hard on it, I can just get it to contact. Okay, with the flap in the balanced position, you should be able to push on the pedal and get that flap to move toward close. Uh, in this case, it will not. We've got a little too much spring tension. So we're gonna, we're gonna make an adjustment of a couple turns here, and then see what effect that has. Last final step, we want to just make sure we got the cotter pin in place, make sure that this nut is tight. Uh, this nut should be snug. We want to go ahead and get it, make sure that it's not loose. That's good. We put a rubber boot back on so that it's in place. We've tightened up our jam nuts so all this uh, looks good out here. 
our cable routing, just inspection to make sure it all looks good, which it does. Uh, we're in good shape there, so we can go ahead and put the cover back on. is tight on the back end. Just want to verify. Got a rubber boot in place. The clevis is pointed the right direction. It's not, not twisted up. Our jam nuts are tight, which we did that. And the, uh, the cable, the cable spacing is not hanging off the back end. We got a nice loop in it here. And uh, so we're good to go. We're ready to cut some grass.